As we have all seen this past week, uh, war has started in Israel, uh, specifically between Israel and Hamas. Uh, the obvious triggering for this was an attack by Hamas, a surprise attack uh, launched on several uh, Jewish settlements, several uh, Jewish uh, bases. Uh, and it, the world is having to now react and deal uh, with what is going on here. Uh, the, the horrors that we are see that we have seen uh, from that attack, uh, you know, Israel's response as well. Uh, these things that we've really had that we're going to really have to grapple with and sort of uh, come to uh, uh, sort of a, a decisions on as a country and as a world as a whole. Um, and I, you know, I want to take this week and kind of talk about this a little bit because it is a conflict in, in the news. And we are told, as our scripture said, uh, today to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I believe now more than ever that that is something that we should be praying for peace for Jerusalem. Uh, and, but I, I really want to kind of, uh, just kind of get a few thoughts out there, a few things, uh, for you all. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest things that I try to always emphasize with modern day Israel, uh, in Palestine and the Palestinians, uh, is the fact that in general, all of the conflicts that we see between them seem to be caused uh, by just a couple extreme groups on either side. Um, and that is something from my own experience, having studied in Israel years ago, that sort of confirmed it, uh, just as well as uh, things I've heard from reliable sources that I've read. Uh, and I think that's something that's important to kind of emphasize. And, you know, to be clear, I'm not an expert on uh, on the Middle East or anything like that. This is why I said that it seems like uh, it's between kind of two extreme groups. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of going on in our nation right now. A lot of kind of re different sort of responses to this. And, and I'm going to be honest, some... Uh, Many, I think, are just kind of ignoring the reality of the situation there because most people don't really get that. Uh, when I was in Israel, one of the things that I was told very, 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 very firmly uh, by uh, one of our tour guides actually is if you don't live in the Middle East or you haven't really studied uh, Middle East, the, the geopolitics of that area, you probably shouldn't, uh, you know, state your opinion out loud as if it is is true uh, and it, it is reality, because there's a lot of complicated factors going on there. Uh, the, the reality is, is that, yes, Israel has done things uh, to the Palestinians that are bad, that are, you know, honestly, and at times terrible. Uh, you know, there, there's been a real tendency uh, in many ways, to treat them in a way that they really shouldn't be treated. But on the flip side, uh, the Palestinians have kind of consistently had these uh, groups kind of rise up into a leadership position uh, where they are just entirely devoted to the destruction of Israel itself. Uh, and that's even their stated purpose. Hamas has that as their stated purpose, that they were seeking to you know, drive the Jews out of, out of Palestine and restore Palestinian and rule and all that type of stuff. And, and that is something which I think, you know, you know, we got to kind of remember and really, really kind of focus on, on here. And, you know, I think us as Christians, we should take some time to kind of get a little bit familiar with this area, get a little bit familiar of what is going on. Some of the history of modern Israel, that's something that I know a lot of people aren't really aware of. Uh, you know, it, it's a good idea to actually go and do some reading about that to because it gives kind of a context for this conflict. Uh, and, and I bring all this up to kind of say that one of the biggest things that when this all started happening that it really just kind of hit me uh, is a real sort of sense of compassion for those uh, who are innocent on both sides who have now been caught up in this whole thing uh, again. Uh, and especially right now, the Palestinians, uh, because Israel has launched their counterattack at the time of recording of this. Uh, and, you know, and it, it is going to be a very, you know, terrible and harsh, harsh response. Uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, you know, there's going to be civilians who wanted nothing but to live their lives and live their lives in peace who are going to be caught up in that. And that that does make me sad. Uh, but it does not mean uh, that I look at Hamas and see them as being an organization uh, that should be applauded, uh, that should be supported, uh, and that should be uh, defended uh, outside of well, Hamas itself and maybe Iran. Uh, 
Um, the reality is, is that when you go and you make an attack on civilians and you start going door to door uh, and brutally killing people, uh, that is the point where you've crossed the line from being a resistance group to being a straight up terrorist group. And we should not at all uh, be supporting those individuals. I mean, we should be praying, uh, you know, and obviously God tells us to love our enemies. And if you want to lift those individuals to prayer, to, in prayer, I would recommend that you lift the up, that they will, you know, have a kind of a Paul uh, on the road to Damascus type of experience, uh, sort of a radical sort of conversion that will lead them to, you know, stop what they're doing, lay down their arms uh, and face the punishment that should come with what their act previous actions have been. Uh, that is what the prayer should be for them. But, you know, I do think, you know, that it is okay uh, to be uh, supportive of both groups, to be supportive of Israel and Palestine, even in the middle of this of, of this conflict, because there are individuals on both sides uh, who really, uh, you know, are want nothing to do with this and just want to live their lives peacefully. Uh, that was something that, you know, when I was there, I really, really struck me and really stuck with me. Uh, was you know, I saw people uh, in, in Palestine and Palestinians and Israeli and Israelis. Uh, who really didn't hate each other, um, who actually got along pretty well and really just want things to be peaceful. They want to live their lives the way that we live our lives here in the U.S. and not have to worry about all the things that tend to kind of happen in that area. Uh, and, you know, and I, I do feel for those people, you know, and, you know, when I, when I was there, we had tour guides who were Israeli, we had tour guides who were Palestinian, uh, we interacted with people in both groups, uh, and all of them were great. You know, all of them, in my impression, were, were wonderful people. And I think that that is something, uh, that we need to kind of remember in this conflict. So my encouragement for all of you and during this week, this next week, uh, and as you're kind of dealing with this, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for those who are innocents, uh, who are caught up in this conflict, you know, pray for their safety, uh, pray, pray for a swift end to this and pray, uh, you know, that, that God will, uh, you know, you know, work his will out in this situation and bring, you know, a, a ending that is beneficial to both groups, an ending that uh, will, you know, allow both groups to really flourish and 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 exist in the way that they should exist. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you all to join me for our last worship song today.